pleasant morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are the group E, which assigned to the topic of hairdressing. Today, we will tackle about the tools and equipment, hair care, disease or disorder of hair, hair and the hair treatment of hair, and the haircut and style, which I think everyone will be excited to learn and will be a knowledgeable and fruitful discussion to every one of us. Without further ado, let's start with our discussion. Good day everyone, I'm Angelica Maninas and for today I will discuss the tools that every hairstylist needs to know and have in hairdressing. Let's start with the first tool which is the shears. A shear is a cutting tool similar identical to a pair of scissors but typically larger. This one is one of the most common that we see in salons and barber shops. Next is the blending shears. Blending shears is a blending or tining shear typically as evenly spaced it on one side and a straight blunt blade on the other. It is used to remove weight and blend the hair and is different from the shears. Next is the clippers. A clipper is, a, is intended for bulk hair cutting on larger areas but does not cut extremely close to the skin. Next is the trimmer. A trimmer is used on the paws, ears, muzzle, and tight areas where it's hard to reach with the larger clippers blade, which commonly used to trend style of hair. The difference between trimmer and clipper is it cuts closer than a clipper. Next is blower or hair dryers. I assume that all of us are familiar with this and some of us have this at home. Blow dryer is a handheld device that blows air and is used for drying and usually styling hair. It is actually easy to use and has two modes of air coming from it, which is the hot and just air. Let's proceed to the next one that you guys may be familiar with, the curling iron. From the word itself, it is used for curling hairs. Curling iron is a rod-shaped, usually metal instrument, which is heated and around which a lock of hair to be curled or waved is wound. Flat iron. A flat iron is a device used for straightening hair by pressing and pulling sections between two heated metal or ceramic flat rectangular plates. It is the opposite of curling iron because it is used for straightening while the curling iron is used for curling. Next is the razor. Razor is a tool with a sharp blade or combination of blades used to remove unwanted hair from the face or body. Next is the sectioning clips. Sectioning clips is used to keep the hair in place. They are ideal when you are sectioning your hair while you're styling it or for securing it crease-free so you can do your makeup. Next are the combs and brushes. Brushes and combs are ex excellent for grooming and both greatly benefit your hair. A hairbrush generally works better for dry hair and can be ideal for removing dandruffs, residues, and massaging the scalp. Where a comb is a perfect tool for detangling your hair when wet. Next one is the is one of the essential thing in a salon used to protect your clothes, which is the capes. A cape is a drape used to cover a customer while he is getting a haircut or other barber shops or salon services. It is used to keep hair off the customer. In any work or things that we do and tools that we use, it is important to sanitize and disinfect it. Next is the disinfectant and jar. Known for its ability to quickly and effectively cleanse and sterilize hair dressing and manicure tools, sanitize grooming instruments including combs, tweezers, scissors, and more. The towel. They are used to protect clothing from hair products to dry hair after shampooing and to provide a comfortable surface for clients to lie on during haircuts and styling. And lastly, the duster brush. 
Duster brush is used to remove loose hair from the hair cutting with soft nylon, nylon bristles and a handle that is comfortable to grip. Those are the essential tools used in hair styling and cutting. Let us now hear the next reporter, which is Miss Krija Campolio. For the continuation, I am Krisha May H. Campolio. I'm here to report the equipment used in hairdressing. First, let us know what is the importance of having appropriate equipment in hairstyling. When you have good quality equipment in your salon, you can put forth high quality work. This will ensure that your business process run smoothly as well as improves salon experience and ultimately customers' satisfaction which is crucial for your business. Hair first is hair styling chair. Hair styling chair are the most basic and essential piece of hair salon. It's always better to purchase chair of the same style and color for the whole salon to get a unified interior design. It is the most important part of a salon as it offers comfort to their customers. This is one of the areas of a salon where the customer spends a lot of time. And second is hair streamers or hair processors. These pieces of hair salon equipment are required during deep conditioning, treatments or after head massage and color treatments, head streamers and hair processors, additionally moisture the hair and keep it healthier. So what is the purpose of a, of a steamer? A hair steamer is a tool that is designed to provide your mane with a burst of steam that opens your hair cuticle. In turn, this allows your hair care products to deeply penetrate standards to achieve long-lasting moisture and strength in hair. So third is shampoo bowls. A shampoo bowl is a sink specifically designed for hair washing and conditioning. Depending on the size of your chair salon, you can go for a different number of shampoo bowls. The purpose of this equipment is to allow the hair stylish or barber to easily wet a customer's hair in preparation for treatments or to provide a full shampoo and wash service. And fourth is carts and strollies. Cart and trolleys are not essential for a hairstylist, yet it is a very useful piece of hair salon equipment. Hairstylists always move around the client and so need to have their tool on hand at all times. Fifth is a hairstyling station. A hairstyling station is another must-have piece of hair salon equipment. It should always include at least a mirror with lamps, an electrical outlet, and a shelves or a table where the hairdressers will put the instruments. An ideal version of a hairstyling station can also include several storage drawers and a separate tool compartment or compartments holders. Next is hood dryers. This dome-shaped apparatus is used for setting and drying hair. In the beginning, you don't need to buy many hood dryers, also known as bonnet hood dryers. One will be enough for your hair salon. And next is hair color processor. A hair color processor is an oversized hair dryer that spends up the chemical or color treatments on dry hairs with utmost efficiency. It cuts down the time of bleaching, dyeing, and burn treatments by 50% as compared to the traditional methods. It promotes faster and better results. Good day everyone. Next is hair care. Ito mga common mistake na ginagawa natin na akala natin ay tama. First is univen distribution of conditioner on hair. Di ba madalas na ginagawa natin ay naglalagay tayo ng conditioner sa ating ulo sa or sa pinakaanit natin mali pa lang ating ginagawa na yon. Meron pa lang proper way para maglagay ng conditioner sa ating buhok, sa tapat ng ating chin or sa ating baba. Doon agad tayo maglalagay ng conditioner pababa. Sabi nga nila, di ba? Ang tamang ang, ang, ta, ang, ang, ang sumusunod sa procedure, sa tamang procedure ay may magandang resulta. Next is frequent use of hot water. Siyempre, di ba, alam naman natin pumapasok tayo sa eskwelaan. Common na sa atin yung gumamit ng hot water para hindi tayo masyadong ginawin. 
may pangit na resulta pala yon sa atin, sa ating mga buhok. Hindi lang sa buhok ang ating damage, kundi sa ating skin dahil ito ay mainit. Sa buhok naman natin, ito yung nagdudulot ng pagkulot o yung parang pagdadry ng ating buhok. Pangatlo, keeping your hair in a ponytail. Siyempre alam naman natin yung mga babae, mga babae kapag mahahabay buhok ay nagpo-ponytail sila. Hindi pala maganda na nagpo-ponytail lalo na kapag ito ay basa. Nagdudulot ito ng pagkakulot o pagkasira. Gawin natin kapag tayo ay kapag gawain natin diba dati gawain natin kapag uh, ligo para magpo ponytail tayo or nagaano tayo ng towel para hindi maano yung sa may balikat natin ayun pala ang pagpo ponytail ay sanhi yun ng pagkakulot or pagkadry ng ating mga buhok or pagkasira or hindi na pagka straight and last refrain from tying hair up when it's wet So, huwag na huwag tayo mag- huwag tayo huwag natin huwag dali na nagtatali tayo ng buhok kapag ay basa. Kasi ito nagsasanhi ng pagkakulot o yung pagkapangit ng buhok natin. Kung baka kahit sabihin natin naligo na tayo, kapag tinanggal mo parang bagong gising ka pa rin. Kasi nga, kapag nagtatali tayo ng buhok habang basa, nasasana yung buhok natin na nakatali. Kaya ugaliin natin na kapag basa ito, huwag itatali. Kapag kasi naliligo tayo, ito yung time na nakababa dapat yung buhok natin para mas ma-absorb ito pa, para mas malinis. Kaya wag natin gagawin na kapag basa itatali kasi nasasanay ito at nagkakaroon ng shape yung ating buhok. Kaya pumapangit. Mas maganda sa, ang suggest ko lang, mag lang tayo kapag kailangan lang. Pero kapag hindi naman kailangan, wag kasi papangit ang ating mga buhok. Lalo na kapag mahaba ang buhok para iwas rebound. Next is, ito yung mga tips para maging maganda ang ating buhok o yung mga tamang proseso ng pag-aalaga ng ating mga buhok. First is, apply a hair mask after shower. Siyempre kapag tayo nagsashower, di ba yung iba dito mga masaselan sa buhok. nag apply sila ng mga kung ano-ano sa mga buhok. Pero mas maganda talaga, mag-apply tayo ng mga suggestion o yung mga narekomenda sa atin ng mga doktor, mga eksperto na i-apply sa ating buhok na may mga ingredients na argan or almond or yung mga hiyang kayo sa mga buhok na inilalagay nyo na mga shampoo or mga conditioner. Second is, detangle hair when it's semi-dry. Siyempre, mas maganda di ba, eto, mas maganda talaga na kapag nagsusuklay tayo or nag, nag-rub tayo ng buhok is wag yung basang-basa. Siguro pwede natin siya i-rub pero Tatanggalin lang natin yung mga tumutulo na tubig. Pero wag na wag natin gagawin is yung basang-basa pa tapos sinusuklay natin. Ayun yung mga dito, minsan madalas niloloko tayo ng mga klase natin na, Uy, sino may cancer dito? Ganon-ganon. Kasi nga, yung mga bok naglalagas. Mali pala yun. Kasi ang bok natin, may, mahinang, may mahi, mahina sila kapag basa. Kaya madalas na kapag nagsusuklay tayo ng basa ang bok, napapansin nyo sa mga suklay nyo, maraming bok na nakadikit. Ayun ang ibig sabihin na wag nat wag tayong mag rarab ng book or mag susuklay ng book kapag basa ito. Mas maganda na lang, mas maganda ito na isuklay natin to kapag medyo dry na or pag parang medyo yun nga dry na. Ayun yung mas magandang way para hindi maiwasan natin yung paglalagas ng mga book or pagtatanggal ng ating mga book. Number three, avoid rubbing your hair when dyeing it. So, ito na nga, yung kamukha lang din yung isa. Huwag tayong magrarab ng buhok habang pinapatuyo o mga nakatapat sa electric pan. Alam ko naman na madalas na ginagawa nyo yan kasi pag pumapasok sa school, yung di pong nakatapat kayo sa electric pan, sinusuklay nyo para matuyo o nirarab nyo. Kakasabi ko nga lang, ang buhok, buhok natin, bas, kapag ang buhok natin ay basa, mas mahina ito, mas, atat, mas, madam, mas madaming natatanggal na buhok. Kaya mas maganda kapag talaga tayo nagpapatuyo ng buhok, gagamit tayo ng tuwalya or mga fabric towel, microfab fabric towel na pwedeng i-absorb yung mga basa sa buhok natin, saka-saka natin suklayin kapag ito ay 7. 
Good day everyone! I am Sunshine D. Irenea and I am here to give all of you an information about the hair diseases or the common hair diseases that we might encounter. So everywhere in the world, hair loss is a common issue that affect both men and women. Men may first become aware of hair loss as early as their 20s while women may begin to notice severe hair thinning in their 40s and 50s. So yun nga, yung pagkalagas ng buhok natin ay isa, ay isa sa normal nating naranasan. Ang pagkalagas ng buhok sa lalaki ay more on 20 nag-uumpisa. Sa babae naman ay naranasan nila ito sa edad na 40 to 50. Pero kahit naman sa ngayon, sa edad natin na to, naglalagas na yung buhok natin. Lalo na sa mga babae na mahaba yung buhok. Tulad ko, madalas naglalagas yung buhok ko lalo na pag nagsusuklay. So, there are many causes of hair loss, but there are also many different ways to treat it. But before hair loss can be treated successfully, it is important to understand what is the causing of the problem. So, the question is, why am I losing my hair? So, anyone who has an idea kung bakit nga ba naglalagas ang buhok natin? Hmm? So, basically, or actually, hair loss can be the result of heredity na mamana. Kung meron man talaga sa pamilya natin na naglalagas na yung buhok or may hair disease, then na ipapas yun through generation or through genes. At pwede rin naman na dahil sa hormonal changes, ito ay nakaka-apekto rin sa pagkalagas ng buhok natin. Such as decrease in estrogens may lead to hair loss. Too much testosterone can also lead to thinning hair on your head, but increase facial hair. So, yun. Pwede rin naman dahil sa medical condition. So, kadalasan sa sakit din natin, no? Like if you have a uh, PCOS or also known as polycystic ovary syndrome. So, one of the symptoms you will encounter is hair loss or if may cancer at nag undergo ng chemo uh, chemotherapy treatment. So, dahil sa taas ng dosage ng gamot or sa radiation, maaari yung mag ng pagkalagas ng buhok natin. Kaya nga kung mapapansin nyo, kadalasan sa mga may cancer, uh, nagpapakalbo na sila kasi unti-unti rin namang malalagas yung buhok nila. At uh, pwede rin dahil sa normal part of aging, so anyone can lose their hair on their head pero mas common sa mga lalaki na naglalagas yung buhok at mas maagang naglalagas yung buhok nila kumpara sa mga babae. So here are some of the common hair diseases that we might encounter or have. So first is what we call the androgenetic alopecia more commonly known as pattern baldness. This refers to genetic or heredity, hair loss accounting for more than 95% of cases. It occurs in men and women somewhat predictable stages and it has been shown to be more advanced as person gets older. So, pag tumatanda na tayo, no? So, kung makita nyo sa picture, male pattern baldness usually start at the temples, no? So, the hairline forms an M-shape. This type of hair loss also leads to baldness at, at the uh, crown of the head. So, nag-uumpisang malagas yung buhok sa tuktok tong ulo natin pababa, pag sa lalaki. Pero pag naman sa babae, usually nag-uumpisang malagas yung buhok sa pagitan ng buhok, sa pagitan ng buhok natin or yung hati dito sa gitna ng buhok hanggang sa malagas na. So, at yung androgenetic alopecia in men has been associated with several other medical conditions, including the coronary heart disease and the enlargement of the prostate. In women naman, this form of hair loss is associated with an increase of polycystic ovary syndrome o yung tinatawag natin na PCOS. Katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, ang paglalagas ng buhok ay maaaring sintomas ng PCOS. Kaya nga minamabuti ng ilang doktor na magpa-check up tayo kung hindi tumitigil ang paglalagas ng buhok. And there are treatments that can help to delay the process but the hair that has been lost will not grow back. Basically, there is no cure in androgenetic alopecia. So, maaaring pagalingin or pabagalin yung process pero hindi na talaga siya mawawala. Hindi na siya totally makukure. 
Next is what we call the alopecia areata, or also known as the patchy hair loss. This is an immune disorder in which your body attacks your own hair particles. It results in a sudden loss of hair in a small parts around the scalp, face, or other areas of your body, which means caution ng immune disorder. Pag naman nagkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na alopecia areata, katulad na mapapansin sa picture, maglalagas ang buhok natin sa iba't ibang parte ng ulo natin causing it to look like that. Kaya nga kadalasan, kung hair loss ang problema natin, ina-advise tayo ng doktor na mag-take ng vitamins with vitamin B. Kasi bukod sa i-help na ibus ang immune system natin na nagkakos ng hair loss kung mababa, makakatulong din siya sa hair growth. Kasi nga, unti-unti nitong pinapalakas ang immune system natin. So, the amount of hair loss is different in everyone. Some people lose it only in few spots, others lose it a lot. Sometimes hair grows back but falls out again later. And in others, hair grows back for good. So there are different types of hair condition under the alopecia areata. Yung tinatawag kong add O para mas mabilis na maalala. Ang A stands for alopecia totalis. Another A stands for alopecia universali. D for diffuse alopecia areata. And the O for aphiasis alopecia areata. So, so now let's go back to the topics. So when we say alopecia totalis, it is the scientific name for an advanced form of this disorder where all the hair on your head is lost. Dito sa alopecia totalis, makakalbo ka na talaga. While in alopecia universali, refers to the loss of all body hair. So basically, sa lahat ng parte ng katawan mo, mawawalan ka na ng buhok. Sa diffuse alopecia areata naman, is a sudden thinning of your hair rather than lost patches. So luminipis lang yung buhok natin at hindi spots by spot ang pagkalagas ng buhok. At sa opiasis alopecia areata naman, ay nagkakos ng hair loss in a bunch shape around the sides and the back of your head. So, katulad ng nakikita sa picture, nawawalan ka ng buhok sa likod ng ulo na parang pa hair band. Ang mga sintomas na maaari mong maranasan if ever na meron tayong alopecia ay ang mga sumusunod. So, small bald patches on your scalp or other parts of your body. Patches may get larger and grow together into a bald spot. Hair grows back in one spot and falls out in another. And also, you lose a lot of hair over a short period of time. More hair loss in cold weather and fingernails and toenails become red, brittle, and pitted. The bald patches of skin are smooth with no rash or redness, but may feel a tingling, itching, or burning sensation on your skin right before the hair falls out. At ang kadalasan o ang may mga matataas na porsyento na mga nagkakaroon ng alopecia ay ang mga sumusunod. So, yung taong may family member na meron ng alopecia noon. Or ang taong may asthma, Down syndrome, seasonal allergies, thyroid disease, vertigo or yung mga taong may puti-puti sa katawan na hindi na naaalis. So, itong alopecia areata can't be cured but it can be treated and hair can grow back. So, katulad na kanina, so, hindi na siya totally nakukured, pero uh, meron namang mga medicines na pwede mong gamitin para bumalik yung dati mong buhok. Next is the traction alopecia. So, this refers to the loss of hair from constant pulling, which can result from tightly braided hairstyle, waves, barrettes, and other hair accessories that can put stress on the follicles. So, it can also occur due to compulsive pulling of the hair due to anxiety, a nervous habit, or an impulse control disorder. So, basically, nangyayari ito pag madalas natin hinihila yung buhok, nagpupusod ng masyadong mahigpet na nagkakos para ma-overstress yung hair or yung paglalagay ng mga hair accessories na masyadong mabigat para i-carry ng buhok natin. So you see, even yung mga madalas natin gawin na nagiging party na ng normal routine natin, sometimes hindi natin alam, ay eh, nagkakos pala para magka-hair loss tayo. Yung hair kasi natin delicate din, kaya kailangan gentle din tayo. So tulad ng pagpupunin ng sobrang higpet, mapapansin mo yan 
yung hairline natin unti-unti nang tumataas kasi nga nababanat, no? So, pwede din naman siyang cause. Ang cause nito is dahil madala, madalas na paghila ng buhok dahil na rin sa anxiety. Minsan, sa buhok natin na ibubunto, na, no? Yung, yung anxiety natin at nagiging habit na. So, bukod dito yung pagkakabit ng hair extension sa buhok. Isa yan sa nagkakos kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng traction alopecia dahil sa nabibigatan yung buhok natin, uh, kaya nagla pwedeng malagas. Ganon din pag masyadong mahaba yung buhok. Dahil nga mahaba yung buhok, nagkakos yun para malagas din yung buhok kasi mabigat na. Kaya pag madalas naglalagas yung buhok, pag nagpapacheck up tayo, either ina-advise is uminom ng vitamins dahil nga sa immune system na nakaka-apekto din. Huwag masyadong gumamit ng shampoo kasi chemical yon at lahat ng sobra ay nakakasama. So, kasama rin rin dito yung pagpubugupit ng buhok dahil nga pag sobrang haba, it adds weight to our hair na nagkakos ng hair loss. So, aside sa mga nabanggit ko, ano pa ba yung mga cause para magkaroon ng hair loss? So, naka-include dito yung redness of the scalps, bumps, soreness or stinging of your scalp, itching, scaling, polycutis or the inflammation of the hair follicles, and also the push-filled blisters of your scalp. E paano ba matitreat ang traction alopecia? So basically, just do the opposite na madalas mong ginagawa na naging dahilan kung paano ka nagkaroon ito. Kung nagkakos ang pagtatali ng buhok, then wear your hair down. Kung gusto talaga magpony, huwag masyadong higpitan. Uh, kung nagkakos ang hair extension, pero gusto pa rin magsuot. So much better is, hindi ka masyadong, uh, hindi masyadong mahaba yung isusuot mo or yung lightweight lang, lightweight lang na hair extension. Or, some, or sometimes mo lang susuot din yung hair extension at hindi araw-araw. So, maaari tanong, maaari din ba itong mangyari sa lalaki kahit na maikli lang yung buhok at kadalasan hindi naman sila nagpupuni. Of course, pwede rin to sa mangyari sa lalaki, lalo na yung mga mahabang balbas, yung palagi nilang pinaglalaroan ito at iikutin, maaari din silang magkaroon ng traction alopecia. So, ganun lang ko ang nagkukas nga is yung pagpapuni ng mahigpit, pagsusuot ng hair extension, uh, pag ikot ng balbas, then do the opposite lang para maiwasan natin na magkaroon ng tinatawag na traction alopecia. Meron din naman tayong tinatawag na telogen epilibium. Normally, naglalagas ang buhok natin ng 30 to 150 hair as part na rin ng hair cycle natin. So, yung pagtubo at pagkalagas ng buhok ay, natin ay may cycle din yan. So, look at the picture provided para mas maintindihan ang mga causes ng paglalagas ng buhok. So, dapat maalam tayo or maalam din tayo sa hair growth cycle. Basically, meron tayong tinatawag na anagen kung saan part ang parte kung kailan tumutubo ang buhok natin. Then, the catagen phase or kilala rin bilang transition phase na nakapagit na sa pagtubo ng buhok at pagkalagas. Ito yung nag-stay yung buhok natin na intact. At yung tinatawag natin na telogen kung saan maglalagas na yung buhok natin. Then, the early telogen kung saan mag-uumpisa na ulit na tumubo yung buhok. So, magre-repeat mag lang yung cycle. So, tandaan, anagen, tumutubo ang buhok. Para dyan, yung naka-stay pa na intact yung buhok, nakapagit na sa anagen at telogen, at yung telogen kung saan naglagas na o natanggal na yung buhok mo. So, balik tayo sa topic. So, normally, naglalagas ang buhok pag 30 to 150, ng 30 to 150 hair as a part na rin ng hair cycle natin. Pero, syempre, nakadepende yung paglalagas ng buhok natin sa washing and brushing routine natin. Usually, nagkakatelogen pag yung normal na paglalagas ng buhok natin ay mas nag-i-increase or dumadami kaysa sa normal na bilang. For example, if ang normal percent ng telogen natin or ang pag-shred ng buhok ay nasa 10%, then suddenly it, jump, it jumps up to 30%, which is sudden increase. Doon, nagkakaroon ng telogen and plebium kasi mas dumami yung paglalagas ng buhok kumpara sa usual na paglalagas. So, usually, nangyayari ito nang biglaan or nag-occur after ng 3 months of being triggered. So, ngayon, ano ba yung mga causes ng telogen epilibium? So, maaari itong mag-occur due to a disturbance of normal hair cycle. Common triggers of telogen epilibium include childbirth, severe trauma or illness, a stressful or major life event, Marked weight loss and extreme dieting, a severe skin problem affecting the scalp, a new medication or withdrawal of a hormone treatment. 
So, kadalasan mapapansin natin na may intelligent tayo pag sobrang daming buhok na yung nalalaga sa atin, no? So, for example, pag nagsuklay tayo, madaming naiiwang buhok sa suklay. Or even pagkagising sa umaga, pag may maraming buhok na naiiwan sa pillow case natin. So, now let's move on to the Anagen Equilibrium. So, ano ba yung Anagen Equilibrium? So, exposure to chemicals such as thallium, boron, and acerne can, pre can precipitate Anagen Equilibrium. Causes of anagen arrest also include radiation therapy, endocrine disease, alopecia areata, cicatrizing disease, and the trauma or pressure. Pampigius vulgaris is reported to be a cause of anagen and plebium. So, yun nga, yung nararanasan naman natin ang anagen and plebium pag nag undergo tayo ng medication like chemotherapy. Dahil sa mga gamot at radiation, nagka-cause ito na maglagas ang buhok natin tulad ng makita sa picture. So, kadalasan, babalik lang yung buhok natin after months na hindi tayo nag undergo ng kahit anong treatment. At dali, sa yung tinatawag natin na hair shaft breakage or mas kilala bilang split end. So, maaaring makuha ang hair shaft dahil sa iba't ibang hair method na ginagawa natin. Madalas, nag hair treatment, pagpapakulay ng buhok pagpapareban or pagpapakulot, overexposure sa araw or kahit sa chlorine na nasa swimming pool. Pag nagsiswimming tayo ay nakaka-apekto rin para magkaroon tayo ng split ends or even because of nutritional deficiency. Kaya nga hindi ina-advise na paglaroan ng buhok at ang, magba ang pabago-bago ng hairstyle palagi kasi yung chemicals na ginagamit sa buhok natin ay maaaring mag-cause para masira ito. So ang tanong, can hair shop be repaired? Can I fix damaged hair follicles? Unfortunately, once your hair follicles have been deeply damaged, it is permanent. Your best bet is to spend your time, energy, and resources focusing on protecting and caring for the healthy follicles. You can also take steps to support new hair growth. Another question, then how can I restore my hair shop? So adding iron, B vitamins, particularly B6. Omega-3 fatty acids, vitamins E, and zinc into your diet can also help repair damaged hair strand. Scalp massage with essential oils like peppermint or rosemary can also keep hair follicles healthy. And this is the end of my report. I hope that you learned something today. Remember, don't forget to always take care of our hair. Thank you for listening and happy learning everyone. Hair treatments. Below are different natural and commercial hair and scalp treatment to select from these are just a few of the many out there. You can choose from first is coconut oil. Has long been used for its skin health benefits and by scalp is no exemption. It can moisturize the scalp and its antifungal, antifungal and antibacterial properties can help reduce the risk of infections. It can even help treat a topic dermatitis. How to use? Apply a small amount of melted coconut oil directly to your skull. Massaging it into the skin, leave it to sit for at least 10 minutes before washing your hair as you normally would. Not only will this help with dry scalp, it will also leave your hair silky and smooth. Number 2. Aloe vera has a few properties that can help with dry scalp. It has anti-inflammatory properties that can help reduce skin irritation and it's also an effective moisturizing agent. How to use? Apply it topically to your scalp and let it sit for 10 minutes before washing it out. You can take oral aloe vera supplements but they can act as a lavative so keep that in mind when taking them. You should also check out our list of benefits to drinking aloe vera juice. Number 3. Apple Cider Vinegar has several good health benefits that can reduce symptoms of dry scalp. It's an antimicrobial which means it can eliminate the bacterial or fungi that could be causing itchiness. It's also anti-inflammatory and can help 
exfoliate your scalp, both of which can help treat dry scalp itself. How to use? Mix one part apple cider vinegar with two parts water and apply it directly to your scalp. Let it sit for 5 minutes before washing it out with a gently shampoo and conditioning your hair like normal. Number 4. Mash bananas are nourishing and moisturizing make them a good treatment for dry scalp and even dandruff. Bananas are natural antimicrobial and the two benefits combined can help clear up your dry scalp. How to use? Mash or blend a banana with a few tablespoons of coconut or olive oil. Blending it will make it easier to rinse out of your hair. Massage it into your scalp and let it sit for 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Number 5. Avocados contain monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids that can both moisturize and protect your skin. You can consume avocados and apply avocado or avocado oil typically to suit dry scalp. How do you use? You can use both avocado oil or blended avocado typically to reduce dry scalp and its symptoms. If you're using a blended avocado, mix it with a few drops or carrier oil like olive oil before massaging it into your scalp. Let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes before washing it up. Next topic is commercial hair and scalp treatments. The hair and scalp expert can do this better. A is hair reborn. Hair reborn is a treatment given to the hair in order to maintain her healthy condition, shine and glossiness. Hair reborn treatment is advisable for damaged hair brought about by frequently hair firming, coloring, highlighting, and other chemical treatments applied to the client's paid or paid when hair. Letter B. Hot oil treatment. Hot oil treatment is a scalp treatment given to clients or patrons with dry scalp, dry beetle hair, split ends, dyed hair, bleached hair, and excessive dandruff. It is administered to the condition the hair and scalp. Good day everyone, I am Nikki D. Amparo and this is a continuation of our report. So before we proceed to the basic haircut, um, let us first talk about the safety in haircutting. So, uh, can anyone read what's on the screen? Okay, miss? So, thank you. Uh, it says that always pound the shears and razor when combing or parting the hair. Number two is do not cut past the second knuckle when cutting below your fingers. Number three is Take extra care not to cut the ears when cutting around them. Number four is, when cutting a fringe, balance the shears by placing the tip of the index finger of your left hand on the fiber screw and the knuckles of your left palm against the skin. So, number five is, when working with a razor, learn with a guard. Number six and last is, discard razor blades in a puncture of or puncture proof container. Now, let us talk about the basic haircuts. Every haircut is made up of one, two, or three of these basic techniques. Add a little texturizing, slide cutting, or scissor over comb, and you have advanced hair cutting. At this point, we will talk about the four basic haircuts based on uh, the screen. So, number one is blunt, blunt cut. So when we say um, blunt cut, it is also known as one length or zero elevation cut or no elevation cut. All hair comes to a single hanging level forming a weighted line. The cutting line can be horizontal, diagonal, or rounded. Cut with a stationary guide and excellent for fine or thinner hair types because it appears thicker. So number two and the next um, basic haircut we will talk about is the graduated haircut. So when we say graduated haircut, uh, it is a shape or wedge caused by cutting the hair when tension. 
or with tension, low to medium elevation or over direction. Uh, most common elevation is 45 degrees. There is a visual buildup of weight in a given area and the ends of the hair appear to be stuck. So let us move on with the third um, basic haircut which is I think very familiar to us which is layered haircut. It is caused by cutting the hair with higher elevation usually over 90 degrees and above and usually have less weight than a graduated haircut. Ends of hair appear farther apart. Layers create movement and volume by releasing weight and may be created with a traveling guide or a stationary guide or both. And the uh, fourth one is long layered haircut. Cut at 180 degree angle gives more volume to haircuts can be combined with other basic haircuts. Shorter layer on top and increasing longer layers towards the perimeter. So that is what we call um, long layered haircut. So again, what are the four basic um, haircuts? Anyone? So okay, that's correct. Number one is blunt cut. Number two is graduated haircut. Number three is layered haircut. And number four is long layered haircut. And now, may I request everyone to look on their screen. So thank you. And you can see in there that there is the basic haircuts we talked about earlier. There is the one length cut or graduate and the graduation cut and the layer cut. So as you can see, there is a big difference on how you cut them. So now let us move on with the more basic haircut information. So like earlier, we talked about the four different uh, basic haircuts and now we will go deeper onto it. So number one again is blunt cut, also known as bob or one length uh, page boy, one level or bowl haircut, simply but requires precision. So client's head should be upright and straight and performed by either holding the sections between the finger or using the comb to hold the section with a little or no tension. So when cutting blunt cut, we must watch the danger zones. What are those? First is the crown. Look to see the growth pattern. May want to cut last or cut slightly longer than the guideline. Once the hair is dry, you can see where it falls and match the length to the guideline. So number two and second is ears. Um, keep an even cutting line even when little or no tension unless working with shorter layers. And it can be designed with or without bangs on straight or medium hair and with or with a short, medium, or long length. And when we talk about the graduated cut, um, you may use a vertical cutting line and for 45 degree elevation. You can use with the center part, side part, or bangs, or you can use a stationary or traveling guideline. And next one is uniform layered or 90 degree cut, uniform layers, all hair is elevated to 90 degrees from the scalp and cut at the same length. Uses an interior traveling guide, resulting shape will appear soft and rounded. As we talk about the basic haircuts, we must also remember that there are other cutting techniques. What are those? First is cutting curly hair. You can apply any cut to curly hair, but you will get uh, very different results than you get cutting straight hair. Curly hair shrinks as it dries and resulting in a weight line that it has graduated itself even higher. So, um, cutting a straight and curly hair it, uh, will be different in result when it, is, when it is dry or when it dried. And next is cutting the bangs or fringe. Bangs and fringe means the same thing. The area that lies between the two front corners, those are bangs or fringe. Bangs are cut using a stationary guide at 90 degrees straight up to the head form or head form. Sometimes you may only cut a few pieces in the bangs or the bang area. A bangs can be blended or not. So, diba, diba? 
So as we can see on over the internet, there are different types of bangs and we can style them according to our likings. So that is all for my part and um, Grace Hazel will continue the report.